I'm going to talk just briefly now uh, about Jacob's. These are the statistics. You heard some of them already today. It's a, it's a big company, and, and it does a lot of stuff. Um, it, it, it's a company that focuses on three core values. And these are the key values that the company has. We're a relationship-based company. That means that we focus on a consultative relationship with our customers and delivering value to the customers day in and day out, continuous improvement, a focus on the customers we have uh, that works very well for us. It's not the only way you can run a business, it's our way. We're also very focused on growth. And you can see that we consider growth to be imperative. We think businesses that don't grow are dying. So we work hard to try to grow the business. And, and we're a company with no meaningful assets. We have a few computers and some office space and some furniture. But our real, the, the real strength of the company is the people. It's those 60,000 folks who walk in and out of the door every day. And it is critically important to us that that asset be the one that we develop um, and grow. So, so that's kind of a little bit about who we are. I put a lot of energy into teaching this. The Jacob's Way is probably one of our great strengths. It is part of our culture in a way that many companies don't have. Um, a lot of companies have a vision and values, but I think great companies tend to have a clear focus on who they are and, and by comparison then who they are not. That relationship-based core value is important because it means our, our business is different. And I tell you this so you have a little bit of a perspective on, on some of the things I'm going to say later. But our business focuses, and I'll see if I can get the, light, the pointer here, exclusively almost on preferred relationships. We don't bid transactions. We don't do far, projects in faraway places for people we don't know. We have customer relationships that endure. Most of those are 50 years old or longer. And so it creates a different kind of a requirement in terms of, of the leadership and the way the company functions. There's the businesses we're in. I put that up because we are the, probably one of the most diverse companies in the industry. And, and we work in, in every segment that you see here. National governments, which is largely aerospace and defense related. Uh, buildings, infrastructure, uh, pharma bio and pharmaceuticals in general, mining and minerals pulp and paper, power, high-tech, food and consumer products, refining, oil and gas, chemicals. It's a pretty diverse spectrum of work. And we see a lot of different kinds of customers and a lot of different geographies as a result. There's a reason that we have those 170 offices in 30 countries. We want to be local to our customer. So in that context, uh, on one more thing, that it's also a company that's been very acquisitive. We have made 65 acquisitions. Um, I was in one 1994. Uh, we continue to make acquisitions very aggressively. And, and acquisitions continue to be part of our growth strategy as we diversify both in terms of markets and in terms of geographies around the world. So let me give you a minute before I go into the next part of my discussion and, and tell you about my career, because I think it'll help you understand uh, some of the things I want to talk about. Um, I went here to KU intending to become a lawyer. I was going to get an architectural engineering degree and then go into law. Uh, switched majors to civil engineering, graduated with civil engineering, and found out what I really wanted to do was get out of the office for a few years, so I went into the construction business. I worked for a general contractor based out of Wichita, Martin K. Eby, for about 11 years. Did all kinds of different jobs in that company from field engineer to, to senior project manager. Uh, went back to school in 1980 and got my MBA. I was living in Denver by then. Got an MBA at the University of Denver. Hugely valuable experience, uh, built on what I'd learned here in a major way, and that, that gap uh, was important to me in terms of being able to use what I learned. Not too long after that, I went to work for CRSS. Well, it was actually CRS when I went to work there, um, in the construction management business. And a month later, they bought Serene, and it became CRSS. And so it was engineering, architecture, both engineering in the sense of pulp and paper engineering, chemical engineering, and, and uh, civil engineering, uh, construction management, and architecture. Uh, I worked for that business for about five years, mostly in the construction management division, uh, and then had the first opportunity to, to uh, do something different in that company, 
and, and that was to become the project manager for Florida High Speed Rail. Now at that point in time I knew nothing about high speed rail, I knew nothing about public-private partnerships, uh, and I'd never really spent any time in Florida, but the next year was a huge learning experience for me. And on the basis of that learning experience, I got asked to join our independent power company as a developer. And I was the senior VP of project development for our independent power company, who did well, basically combined cycle combustion turbine power plant projects on a private basis. Um, we owned the asset, we hired somebody to, to design it and construct it for us, uh, and then we operated and maintained the facility after it was put in service and sold power either to a company or to the grid. And that was a deal business, and it was a really interesting business to be in, completely different than the engineering business, uh, much more I suspect like what the Wall Street crowd goes through. Uh, the excitement and the euphoria of the deal was, was interesting. It was a very small group of people, about 10 of us. But I found out I didn't like that very much. I mean, it's not that I didn't like the deal business, but I, I wanted a, more involvement with people. So after three years doing independent power, I asked if I could go back to the engineering side of the company and, and went back uh, to run engineering in Greenville. Did that for about a year, and then the company started looking around to be sold. Came back to Houston, where I was living at the time, uh, and helped sell the company to Jacobs. Uh, I had a contract as a senior guy, as a part of the sale. One of the things that often happens is you get, they give you a contract, says if you get fired in the first year after you're uh, sold, you'll get a year's pay. Well, Jacobs being the sort of outfit it is, which is very tight with a dollar, uh, we couldn't bear the idea of actually paying me off to not work, so they took me on anyway, but they didn't have anything for me to do. So believe it or not, for the next 11 months in the company, I just did whatever needed doing. If we were working on an acquisition, I went and helped out with the acquisition. If we, were, we had a situation where we needed to recruit a new president for our construction business, I went out and helped recruit the president for our construction business. So just one of those kinds of jobs after another for about 11 months. And then the CEO came to me and asked me if I wanted to run sales for Jacobs. And I'd never run sales before. So we had a fascinating conversation about how sales should be run in the company. And we disagreed 100%. I mean, we spent four hours in an argument. At the end of that, I called my wife, she was still in Houston, said, don't worry about it, we're not moving to California, there's no way they'll give me this job. And a week later, I was head of sales for Jacobs. Which I found kind of interesting in and of itself, that I could so strongly disagree with the CEO about how the job should be done, and still get the job to do. And I ran sales for Jacobs for about eight years, uh, a period of tremendous growth for the company, uh, and then was made president in 2002 and CEO in 2006. And I've got just almost six years now as CEO of the company. So, so that's how I got to where I am, and, and the reason I tell you that is, is to give you a sense of, of why some of the things I'm gonna tell you at the end of my discussion, why I believe they're important. <clears throat> 